Welcome to the Medical Device Made Easy podcast. Here is Munir Alazuzi from easymedicaldevice.com and we are here uh, to talk about notified bodies. Uh, I wanted to stop a bit to learn about MDR and to learn about uh, other countries to really understand the situation about notified bodies in Europe actually. Uh, with the new medical device regulation and the IVDR also. Uh, and um, I just wanted to say, yes, we had a lot of uh, information that were coming lo those last few weeks about the notified body situation. Uh, there were some notified body that uh, were um, laying down service, if I can say. Uh, and uh, then uh, we had to really understand what, is, um, what does it mean and what is the situation. And uh, just wanted to say, yes, uh, notified body is really an important piece of um, this process for registration of your medical device in Europe to get the CE mark. We need the notified body for all products that are uh, outside of class one uh, to get the CE certificate. And uh, I please ask notified body to stay, to not give up on uh, getting this uh, MDR certification and then to help all manufacturers to also put uh, compliant medical device on the market. And uh, today uh, I have with me uh, Eric Volbrecht, uh, who is back just to help us understand the situation. So Eric is a lawyer at Axon Lawyer Firm and uh, is a specialist in healthcare. And he will help us to really see what is happening and also maybe give us some solutions or uh, what are exactly the procedures that the manufacturer should follow uh, to be in a good shape or a good situation. So, Eric, uh, welcome to the Medical Device Made Easy podcast. Thanks for having me again, uh, Monier. And before people think I'm uh, broadcasting from my bedroom, I'm broadcasting from my hotel room, which was the only uh, only uh, quiet place I could find at the conference in, uh, in Washington uh, that I'm currently attending, which is yeah. also a place where this whole subject is quite, uh, quite hotly uh, debated because it's also... One of the things I would say uh, foreign companies, so companies outside of the EU, often less understand about the uh, European framework. So it's, it's a good idea to have a podcast about it to help uh, people, uh, people a bit. Exactly. So yeah, you are, um, you are at your conference. Uh, you also mentioned that about uh, the uh, conference that you are doing also with QServe, uh, mm -hmm. the MDR. And um, so, yeah, as I've said, today we are talking about notified body situations. So we have, as I've said, had a lot of information about some notified bodies. And before to start, I wanted to uh, make with you, um, Eric, uh, a small inventory of the notified body situation uh, wow. related first to how many notified bodies are now qualified. So we are now in July, the end of, end of July. Uh, mm -hmm. How many notified bodies are qualified for the MDR and IVDR? Yeah, for the MDR, it's, it's just two. Okay. Uh, so it's BSI UK, which I would say is like a half under the current circumstances. And uh, yeah, there's two suits from, uh, from Germany. So that's, that's another one, uh, one of the big ones. So together, you could say that's still a sizable part of the notified body capacity in Europe because they're both really big notified bodies. But uh, for the IVDR, none yet, uh, unfortunately. So that's, that's where we are uh, stuck at the moment. And of course, the commission is saying, yeah, the process is running perfectly. And I've, I've actually heard rumors that by the end of the year, we would have 19 notified bodies designated in total. So that would mean 17 in addition. But uh, yeah, I, I haven't seen those designations drop yet. So uh, I'm, I'm pretty curious whether that will happen. And out of these 17, I would expect that at, there's at least one for BSI Netherlands. So that's BSI UK becoming an EU 27 notified body. So yeah, that would be like 16 new ones, basically. Okay, so we, ju we just believe what we see. So let's, uh, let's wait for the, the real announcement. Let's wait for the, seeing their name on, uh, on the Nando database and seeing that they are really qualified for that. Um, just uh, now on the, this was, if I can say, the good news, even if two is not really a lot. Uh, in terms of bad news, so how many did lay down service, as we can say? Yeah, that's, that's, that's let's say it's an increasing number. Um, because and also mostly UK notified bodies at the moment. Uh, one 
one Swiss one that laid down a service uh, some time ago. And also, um, it's, it's actually, and, and uh, then uh, we have, uh, well, uh, Intertech, of course, that, that stopped earlier this year. Okay. In the, uh, then we had recently LRQA, and then most recently we had UL. So you could say that there's quite a, a massacre going on between uh, uh, in the notified bodies uh, in the UK. But also, it's when I was thinking about it, it's it's not so totally new that you have notified bodies laying down service because if you look at how the Nanda database developed for notified bodies for the MDD, yeah, you see some drop off and you sometimes also see others uh, others join, which is always a bit under the radar, especially in the eastern part of Europe. There's there's actually a, a reasonable number of notified bodies that were added and also dropped off or reshuffled at some point so it's yeah it's it's maybe it's that's that's also something that happens that people do not uh the, the people that talk a lot about medical devices regulation uh, tend to overlook so uh in terms of also that um of of those notified bodies that decide to uh, not continue with this process so they are, I suppose, also um, MDD. They are. They have the MDD certification uh, yeah. accreditation, so they they can also give the certificate for uh, the CE mark, but under MDD. So, mm -hmm. what is now the consequence for them or and for the manufacturers? So, what exactly can we um, expect from those information that we receive now? Yeah, that's that's. That's something that companies, I find, generally fail to realize that uh, as soon as you get, uh, because you get a letter from the notified body, if the notified body is, uh, is going to uh, lay down service, uh, uh, which I think is one of the most euphemistic terms ever, <laughs> because you are really, you're in deep shit if your notified body lays down, uh, lays down service at the moment. Because what happens is that notified bodies are obliged to give you three months notice. So they give you 90 days. Okay. And then um, when, they, uh, when that happens, you basically have three months or 90 days to get your product certified by another notified body. And that, under the current circumstances, is basically impossible because there are no notified body is looking for customers at the moment because they're all really busy with MDR related stuff if they're in the MDR pipeline. Or uh, they are just uh, trying to uh, stay afloat, which I think staying afloat is a nice metaphor because I, I saw a really nice uh, metaphor that uh, Sue Spencer uh, made recently about a notified body. She said, yeah, you should see notified bodies as, as a swan. Okay. Uh, surface you see this this quiet composure and grace and underneath the water they're pedaling like crazy to uh, to, uh, to to go somewhere <laughs> so you're nice a nice image yeah nice image yeah. To, to look at that yeah <laughs> well if you know sue a bit then then you could totally uh, see why uh, she's also very composed always and she she can just make these metaphors like no one else i think but yeah, so what happens is you get this letter from your notified body that says, uh, well, good luck. We are laying down service. You have 90 days to find another notified body. And if you are lucky, uh, the letter itself gives you uh, information because uh, I've seen, I've had several clients that were implicated by Intertech closing down. I've had several clients that were implicated by LRQA closing down. And what you see is that the process was handled slightly differently because what the MHRA did in, uh, for LRQA is that they made LRQA put in an uh, MHRA dictated statement on this is, how, this is what the legal consequences are and this is how you find another notified body because they're actually not even obliged to put that in there. So and, it's, uh, it's the health authority that is really telling that you should do that to your customers. So the health authority has the power to do that. Yeah, because the MHRA is the notifying authority for LRQA. So when LRQA laid down a uh, service, they, uh, they made them put these statements in the letter uh, to make it clearer what the legal effects are. That was one of the problems with the, uh, with the Intertech situation, that the letter that went out to customers was not that clear. Okay. And... Um, 
So that, uh, yeah, that, that created a lot more confusion uh, there. But yeah, so you're in this situation, you get this letter, you have 90 days to find another uh, notified body. And by the time these 90 days expire and the notified body does lay down service, the certificates become invalid. Okay. And that's, that's a big thing because uh, I've had clients that, that said, yeah, but hey, we have a certificate and the certificate has a date on it. And that date is way beyond these 90 days. So uh, we, we were expecting the certificate to remain valid for that much time. And you have to tell them, no, it's not true. So you cannot rely, in a, in a scenario like this, you cannot rely on the date on your certificate. The only thing you know is within three months, you have to find another uh, yeah, legal instrument for approval of your product. And, and, as, and as you mentioned, it's not easy to do that. I mean, as you, as you said, so there is a lot of difficulties because they are busy on overall tasks than finding new customers uh, to help. I mean, yeah, I mean you could to not go, to, go to a notified body now and say, hey, can you, can you onboard me in three months? If they answer the phone at all, they, in this case, they would probably laugh at you and uh, ask you what planet uh, you've been, uh, been hiding on the last couple of years. So, it's yeah. I mean, it's strong language, but this is this is really. Uh, I've I've had issues with one notified body where we 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 had a, a reviewer lose their shit in the uh, uh, in the proceedings or, and and said some pretty outrageous things actually on the record. So yeah, you just see the pressure rise everywhere, and under those circumstances, these yeah notified bodies are not going to onboard you quickly. Not even if your uh, files are in complete, uh, complete working uh, order, because if a notified body lays down service, then eh, it might just be that uh, that they are laying down service uh, because a lot of their files were not super good, okay, and because they were not able to. Um, to uh, have a good chance of being MDR accredited, for example. Okay. Because, because they have issues of their own. So not, what you see is that notified bodies don't trust each other very much anymore, which makes a like-for-like -like transfer of a certificate really difficult. And normally, when everything is going right and okay, then a like-for-like -like transfer is, is, uh, is not that difficult. But we've seen over the years that notified bodies were in any event more and more difficult with these like-for-like -like transfers. That was happening less and less. And now, yeah, I mean, if, if, you are, if they need to onboard you with a full new audit at the start, it's at least a year. Okay. So, so then what do you do? Eh? Because you have 90 days and it takes a year. So there's, let's say, small delta there, <laughs> right? And, and that's where this orphaning procedure comes in that we've been, uh, that, that, uh, that's the subject of this uh, podcast also. So just, just to explain to the audience, what is an orphaning procedure? So it's an official procedure that exists for uh, when you have no notified body? Uh, no, because it's, yes. it's basically, it's a, uh, it's a CA, CAMD uh, uh, or not sure if it's CAMD or Heads of Medical Devices, uh, competent authorities, but anyway, one of these clubs. Yeah, I think it was the Heads of, uh, heads of uh, Competent Authorities for Medical Devices. So <clears throat> what they did was they got together and they said, okay, we have these notified bodies uh, laying down service or keeling over or however you want to call it. Uh, and we have these manufacturers that are suddenly without certificates. What can we do about that? So then they came up with the uh, so-called uh, uh, orphaning procedure. And this, this orphaning procedure is, uh, well, it's exactly what it is. Suddenly you are without guardians, so to speak, right? Like an orphan. And then, uh, yeah, you need somewhere to go. You need somebody to take care of you. And that is what a member state will do. It's, and it's interesting because, uh, because the NDR, and that's also why this is uh, uh, not so, yeah, why it's difficult that it happens at this moment, because the NDR has a complete procedure for that. 
if the notified body lays down uh, a surface, then the MDR, I believe it's Article 42, let me see, has a procedure for it. Okay. But not the MDD. But as they are not in the MDR, it's, <laughs> it's uh, yeah, it's, it's, it will affect, it will, uh, it will have apply after that uh, May 26, 2020. So I suppose that, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they are they are a bit uh, yeah not in the game uh, still now. Oh, sorry, it's Article uh, 46, 46, Yeah. Okay. That has the procedure in it, and um, yeah. So they basically what they did was they 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 set up a procedure uh, very much modeled uh, on uh, Article 46, the Article 46 procedure that allows uh, companies to petition. Uh, the competent authority that's responsible for them uh, and uh, basically uh, grant them maximum of 12 months orphaning protection. So that means that you can continue to do what you were doing under certain conditions. Okay, so yes. just just stop, uh, stop a bit there now. So mm -hmm. now we are saying that the national authority will take the place of the notified body. Is it correct? That's correct, yeah, but they will take the place. Uh, and for example, the Dutch competent authority put on their website very explicitly, okay. yeah, even though we take the place of the notified body, we are not going to act as a notified body. So that means that we are not going to do surveillance audits. Okay. And also, we are not in the business of approving your changes uh, that you would normally discuss with your uh, notified body. So if you want to change anything that re would require uh, uh, amendment of the certificate normally, then uh, you do that with your next notified body. But that's not what we are about. We are an emergency measure and we are not uh, replacing the notified body. So it means that we are kind of freezing all the process uh, at the company, they have to act as uh, as when they were with the notified body. They cannot change anything. They have just to go in a safe mode, if I can say, waiting for landing in, with a new notified body. Exactly. Yeah, because it's it's an emergency procedure, and if you would have a, if the member states would just would start to behave like a notified body, then they're in the exact same problems as notified bodies are these days. Where do you get enough people to do that? But, but also, this, this brings up a point. The Dutch are really uh, clear about this. But <clears throat> the problem is that the procedure as agreed between the competent authorities has not been written down at EU level. Okay. So that means that there is no central document to draw from. It means that uh, every competent authority has the liberty to uh, deploy their own version of this. And that makes it really interesting for people like me because you see different solutions to different problems in different member states, but it makes it incredibly annoying and difficult and intransparent for, uh, for uh, companies. But because now as far as I know, there's only three competent authorities that bothered to write down this procedure. Okay. The Swiss competent authority and the Dutch competent authority and the uh, French competent authority that I know of, maybe, maybe others did as well, but th these in my experience have written it down. And yeah, you see, just see differences between, uh, between them. And I also have experience with the way the MHRA applies the procedure. And there's also some differences uh, there as well. And yeah, what you, what you do as a manufacturer is you, um, that's also a weird one because you do not go to the, to the member state for, uh, that was responsible for the notified body, but you go to the member state in which you are located as manufacturer, if you are a European manufacturer, or where your authorized representative is located. So it can happen that you're in a situation like I've had that with a client, with an American client that had was using Intertech as a notified body, that had to go to the French authorities because that's where their authorized representative was. Okay, so it's really um, I mean talk it's about a UK notified body. <laughs> so it's it's really something that people don't know for now, and it's something that uh, yeah, it's really interesting to to share with them. So for example, mm -hmm. yeah, as you've said, so. 
even if I am in in uh, in France, uh, my company is located in France, and my uh, notified body is located in Germany. Uh, and if the notified body is uh, laying down service, then I have to go to the French authority to um, to go through this orphan procedure. Yeah. yeah. And, and I, I would say, in my experience, there's definitely worse authorities to go to than the French because yeah. I, I've seen the French be more than accommodating with the way they uh, they apply this procedure. Really, hats off for how the ASNM uh, does this or the ANSM. ANSM, yeah, ANSM, ANSM yeah. yes. And uh, if 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 we are in a country that has no procedure at all, so we are in a bad situation. Well, no, then, then, then the procedure is uh, 100% informal, I would say, okay. because you can still rely on this having been agreed by the, uh, by the heads of the agencies, but you don't have, they, they don't have it written down, so you're basically in a situation where you have to go with whatever they do. Okay. So you have to contact them and you have to see what exactly is the process with them. And I mean, it's, um, it's the process will, the process will be similar, but you don't have the certainty in advance how exactly they will apply it. Okay. It's really interesting. So, um, now I'm a company that uh, is, um, orphan. So I have no notified body. Uh, what are the consequences also f regarding my product? So can I continue to sell the products as usual? Can I, um, if, 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 if my author, if my, um, health authority, if my member state, um, is taking the lead now, um, is there some differences uh, with the, uh, the normal notified body process? Uh, well, yes. I mean, first of all, if you're in a situation where your notified body has already stopped uh, and you are still talking to the member state, and the member state has not definitely granted you the orphaning uh, protection yet, then you already have a problem. Okay. Because as, as soon as the notified body stops, so the, the 90 days have passed uh, uh, that they have to give you notice, then the certificate is invalid. Okay. And if you have an invalid certificate, then it's like your certificate was withdrawn. You should immediately stop placing new products on the market. So that's, that's one consequence. But then it becomes quite important with which uh, competent authority you are in the process. Because what you would normally do is you would file, uh, you would file for um, uh, orphaning protection. Okay. And you would do that as soon as you can. Why? Uh, or maybe wait a bit. That's possible too. Depending on the competent authorities. Because the MHRA, for example, they have the procedure themselves that your orphaning protection only starts at the date that the MHRA issues the letter in which they grant you orphaning protection. Okay. Uh, so that means that, let's say, you, you do your application and you need to wait one month, maybe one and a half months, maybe two months, and then they confirm, okay, everything is in order, then your orphaning protection starts, which means that you would need to immediately start in order to not be in a period where, on the one hand, your certificate is invalid, and on the other hand, you don't have the letter from the authority saying, we will grant you orphaning protection. That's one. But the French authorities, for example, what they do is they say, we have the procedure that as soon as, you, as soon as we receive your application, on the date we receive your application, your orphaning protection starts. And if we find after evaluation that your application is uh, not well-founded, then we revoke that protection. Okay. So... In France, for example, if you want a maximum duration of protection, you would file this uh, request towards the end of the 90 days. Because that means that you have maximum 12 months plus the maximum of the 90 days as a protection period. Okay, interesting. Yeah, really, really a good tip if I can say if people are in so the French, uh, French area. Exactly, but that means that you have to know exactly how the competent authority that you're dealing with, the Germans will do it differently. Uh, the Dutch have a really detailed um, 
procedure on their website, but uh, they they also may have their. But this procedure doesn't say when exactly the orphaning starts. Just one thing also, so uh, maybe a point of detail, but uh, on the box of my products or on the product itself, we have a CE with the number of the notified body. Uh, can we continue to deliver the products with this marking or should we already produce new products with new marking? Well, that's, that's, that's a bit of a problem because you cannot put a new number on it because yeah. you are not with a new notified body yet. Um, you can also not put uh, no number on it yeah. because you, if it's a classification that requires an notified body, then you have to put a number on it and the member states in orphaning don't have a number. So the only logical conclusion as, as I see it would be to, uh, yeah, to leave the number of the uh, former notified body uh, on it. No, that's, not, that's the only logical conclusion, uh, I think, because otherwise you would also get traceability uh, issues. Exactly. Uh, because then it wouldn't be clear which notified body has last look at the type of this device. No, I think it makes uh, totally, totally sense. And <laughs> now, if I add one more component, so uh, as you may know, so as I've said, we are in July, uh, mm -hmm. we have uh, Brexit 2, if I can say, <laughs> coming in October. So um, what is uh, the consequence of orphaning and also with Brexit? Well, that's, that's a good question because uh, um, the answer to that is catastrophic. Okay. <laughs> Sounds a bit dramatic, but uh, maybe I had too much coffee to stay awake here. Or, or should I put, uh, maybe I put on the editing uh, uh, dramatic music or something? Yeah. Da, da, da. <laughs> I'll, try to, I'll try to find that just to <laughs> not a bit. Put in a nice sound effect. No, but it, it, it is catastrophic because uh, also, um, well, of course, there's, there's no procedure that has accounted for the Brexit. And this is also policy. And what I've heard now from several sources, among which uh, authorities of a member state, is that the Commission has said, in case of a hard Brexit, all the ongoing orphaning for, for UK notified bodies stops. Okay. So if you are not, that, that is what I hear member states' authorities say, this is the Commission's uh, point of view. Uh, that's apparently it's something that they've said at the closed part of the last NDCG meeting to the member states. But this is serious shit eh, for the, uh, for, for uh, pardon the strong words, for, uh, for companies. Because if you are with UL and you haven't moved to the Polish notified body that they've partnered with, if you are with BSA, BSI and you are not at BSI Netherlands yet, if you've been orphaned by, uh, by LRQA uh, and uh, you are being orphaned by, uh, by a competent authority at 31 October this year yeah. and the hard Brexit happens, then the 12 years that you, the, sorry, 12 months, the 12 months that you thought that you had will immediately end on 31st of October. This is what the Commission is saying at the moment. Because they are so pissed off about this whole hard Brexit thing happening is that they are not going to give the UK a break on this. Okay. Because this is serious. This is political, uh, highest political level negotiation. Yeah. So they're not going to say, yes, of course, we, uh, dear UK, we will help you uh, solve your own problems if you are trying to have your cake and eat it. So they will say, huh? The problem is, of course, that you end up punishing companies that, uh, that, that uh, pick a UK notified body as a notified body, but then the EU would say, hey, uh, remember January 2018, our notice that said, better be quick, better go to an EU 27 notified body because this hard Brexit is coming sooner or later. And this was already in the, in the 20 January 2018 notice. Yeah. So also the companies that did not run away from the UK notified bodies at that time are being punished now. So let's say you've survived the LRQA uh, laying down service. You've managed to be orphaned by a competent authority and you're like, Ooh, yeah, I have 12 months 
to find a new notified body, 31 October. If we get the hard Brexit, that it really looks like is going to happen, because, I mean, if you look at the political climate in the UK at the moment, it just looks like uh, they will have a Brexiteers-run government. Okay. Uh, that's not going to compromise. If that happens, then immediately your orphaning ends and you cannot place further product on the market until you've completed the process with your new notified body. And that is dramatic. So do we have, um, do, I mean, the only solution is mainly to exit UK? Is, what, what should they do now? As I said, we are in July, in October it will happen. So is there an escape from this uh, situation? No, not if not. No, basically not, because uh, these these are pretty slow processes to go to another notified body. So if you've been, if you've been, if you were with a UK notified body that has uh, laid down service, and you are in the process of transitioning under orphanage, then you need to plan for a scenario that your orphaning ends on uh, uh, on uh, 31 of October. So no more production, no more delivery, no more, no well, more things. So there's still, of course, the situation that uh, a member state could still say, well, your device is essential to uh, the patients in my country. Okay. So I'm going to give you an exemption based on that. But that's an exemption you need to apply for on a member state by member state basis. Okay. And if you're selling in a bunch of member states, This is a lot of work. So I can imagine, yeah, you should have a, a good team and also have a good, a good process, uh, process for that. So um, I think it uh, gives uh, uh, the picture. The, I, can, I cannot say the good picture, but really the picture that is uh, now related to the notified body situation. Uh, there is some solutions. Uh, but yeah, I mean, um, we cannot make miracles. So, so we have really to ask uh, the manufacturers to uh, have a plan, to think about it, and really to, uh, to yeah, I mean, to execute now and not to wait for uh, things that uh, can really be dramatic for their companies and for them. So, uh, Eric, is there something else that we can say to the, uh, to the audience? Well, I think that's, that's, that's a broader a uh, broader picture that I've also tried to press home at the, uh, at the conference uh, today is that really as a devices company, you need to make scenarios around the next couple of years uh, uh, under European medical devices law. So that means that you need to basically uh, look at, okay, what is my uh, uh, threat envelope as they call it? So what regulatory threats could happen to me, define all of them and make a plan for each of those threats, even if it's not very likely. Like a hard Brexit, uh, for example, what does that mean to me? Uh, I cannot find a new body, a notified body timely. My current notified body keels over. My current notified body is not MDR uh, accredited in time. All these scenarios you need to have a plan for. What will I do? Because there's a lot of things you can do to mitigate, uh, for example, uh, temporary um, non-certification. Because if you are able to manage your production um, quickly, then you can make bridging stock, for example. So at least you your cash flow doesn't collapse immediately in Europe. And also... Your, uh, you can still be on the market because what happens if you're on, not on the market for some time, your market share is up for grabs and somebody else just fills it up. Exactly. It's really difficult as a company to fight back, uh, uh, to fight your way back into that market share. That's, that's, uh, that's a lot more work than, uh, than losing it uh, or maintaining it, I will tell you. Yeah, great. So um, I think um, you are talking also a lot about that, about the situation on your blog. So medicaldeviceslegual.com. Mm -hmm. So I really encourage all the people to also go there and to uh, read what Eric Volbrecht is, um, is writing. Uh, just to subscribe also, you get directly an email from, from him, uh, right to the new, uh, new blog posts. Uh, and I think, yeah, there is also a lot of information, a lot of updates. So if you are on really to follow the updates, you can directly go to, uh, to the blog. Uh, and I think, Eric, you are still reachable on uh, LinkedIn or uh, other platforms so that uh, you can maybe answer questions to people. 
Yes, yeah, I, I do get a lot of questions. So it, uh, it, it, if, if it's not answered immediately, it's not personal. But uh, yeah, I have a lot of people that, that often ask me quite complex questions. And uh, I, if, if it's complex questions and I, I just need to answer them for the, hell of, for, the, for the heck of it, that's not usually, let's say, top priority. So uh, it's not personal, but it can take a while before I get around to it. No, it's great. And if you have a good question or with a kind of uh, some good information, we can also come back to uh, share it also on this podcast and, and help people to really uh, understand the, the situation. Okay, so Eric, so thank you for your time. Thank you for all uh, your information. And I hope that now people will uh, start to execute and create scenarios as you mentioned. So Eric, thank you and I wish you a nice day. Thank you very much. Have a nice day, Munir.